Oh, years ago I started off because my father was a welder and so I seemed to get fall into it in that direction and started my apprenticeship with a small little company in Dundrum and they they were only doing light light fabrication work and I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to get into the heavier stuff that you could travel better with a better qualification. So I went to a big huge international company called APC, finished serving my time with them and then more or less travelled the country mainly Ireland with all that with them and for about two years maybe three years doing big jobs in Limerick and Alcan and places like that I worked in Scotland Wales England uh, Saudi Arabia North Sea places like that the construction industry them days was absolutely brilliant like the crack you'd have in sites you know you meet the funniest of people from all over the place you never know who you're going to meet from where or anything else um, but like I've worked on some really big jobs and, and then you come back to the domestic stuff like I've worked on Vincent's Hospital, that new shopping centre in Arklow. You know, you go from huge oil refineries in Wales coming back to maybe Vincent's Hospital here. It's like small jobs again. Quite a huge difference in the style and the amount of experience you need to do all these jobs. Uh, oh. Training apprentices now is, you know, one of the real good things you have to do and you know you have to look after an apprentice and make sure you actually learn something as you're going through because i'm not going to be here forever so somebody else has to take my place uh one funny thing though when i was an apprentice myself you're a tick young lad like you just told do what you're told so i was uh just said when you get into the basket of that crane there your mom just lift you over onto that building and uh put on a bit of a weld on the thing for him over there and of course they all headed off to the pub i think it was at lunchtime and left me up in the basket swinging away over Stephen's Green for an hour and a half. <laughs> as far back in, as I can remember, I always wanted a big carpenter. And I was very fortunate that when I did leave school, I got a great apprenticeship with a company called John the Molin Limited. They've done a lot of churches. And they were a fantastic builders to serve your time with. And great apprenticeship, very happy, loved my job. And always worked. Yeah, well at the age of 25, in the last recession actually in the 80s, uh, I was made redundant, the company I served my time with, I was with them for 14 years, they closed down. So I found myself out of my own, on the dole, with a young family. And um, I went to a company by the name of Costello Doors. And they said they'd give me a start as a self-employed carpenter, hanging doors and doing bits and pieces. But as a transpired, I never got a single door out of them, because things were so quiet. The carpenters that were already working for them in other branches came out to the new branch and they would take the work so there was no work for me. So I just muddled on through it and I got a job off my first employer and that started the ball rolling really. I had no choice and I sort of never looked back from then. I've been working on my own now since I was 25. When I started off I was a one man band and I was a one man band for years but as things picked up it then uh, went partners with a guy and we opened up a joinery shop together and at one stage we were employing 13 lads at the height of the boom so uh, that guy moved away and I had to take the business over myself so we reduced it then down to five lads so for years we worked with five lads fine everything was great and yeah, another funny story I remember when I was just out on my own my boss he, he gave me a bit of a break he was getting a lot of work done on the house and i was supervising it and doing a bit of work there myself but this particular monday morning uh, i had been out on the beer on the sunday night and to cut a long story short i never actually got to bed but because it was my old boss i couldn't let him down so anyway i i, I took the cold shower and done all the, the remedies to try and get myself right and I got to the house and fortunately he was just on the way out 
and he said look the guys are coming to fix the sunken bat uh, the fiberglass lads so uh, you know keep an eye on them and sure do the bits and pieces yourself so he left and uh, the guys arrived and i showed them what to do and i was really starting to feel that the tiredness was really kicking in then so they were in the ensuite in the bathroom and we were in the boss's bedroom now it was as big as a garage it was huge so I said to the lads, look, I'm just going to lay in the bed here, lads. Uh, if you don't mind, if, if anything happens or you see the boss coming, give us a shout. So that was at about nine o'clock in the morning. And just coming up on a quarter to one, the lads woke me. And the boss called me aside and he says, uh, well done, Mickey says, uh, very happy with that job. But he says, you couldn't trust these lads by themselves. <laughs> So that was very, very funny. I got away with that. When that phone stops ringing, it's sort of a shock to your entire system. And you realize you have to go down to this bloody queue and sign on and come back and do absolutely nothing. You know, and it was, it was like someone just killed me. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can think of. You're ringing around, you're trying to find someone. And there was actually nothing there. Well, as you can see, the place is very, very quiet now. Eerie, eerie silence. Nothing happening at all. It's a bit of a mess at the moment because um, I just haven't the heart to clean it, to be honest. But at one time now, this place would have been a hive of activity. There was uh, four of us and myself, five lads all together, including myself. And there was one time we couldn't cope with the work. I'm working overtime Saturdays. And in the space of... About a year and a half ago, it was like someone just turned off a tap. Apprenticeships were always a very important part of the building game. Personally, I've had four lads in my time as a joiner. And I got on great with all of them and good friends with all of them. As a matter of fact, I ended up working for two of them. And uh, so, yeah, I think if you if treat people right, it'll come back on you and come back to you. I was very fortunate insofar as one of the apprentices that I was talking about earlier that I had trained he was going off on honeymoon and he asked me would I come in and look after the workshop for a month now that was 12 months ago so I take every week as a bonus and I'm one of the lucky ones I'm still getting a paycheck at the end of the week so you know if, you, if, you, if you're good to people on the way up they'll be good to you on the way down I went on a course recently, a walking guides course, and it opened up a whole new field of opportunities to be able to get on. I met some fabulous people, especially the people who train me. You know, really, really highly skilled people and train you how to be very proficient in the mountain. The people that were instructing it and the people generally in the whole course were just super like, they were really nice people and they were intent on teaching you every single thing you needed to know. So then from there it's just blossomed and blossomed and blossomed, met more people in the outdoor world, took us rock climbing, taught us you know, to do all kinds of qualifications in the outdoor sector that you would never, I, I didn't even know they were out there, that kind of thing. Kayaking, oh, it's just, it was almost like a, a team park for old people. <laughs> so I got on really, really well and at the best of crack, quite content and happy. Of course, I haven't got half the money that I was earning because this is the lower paid. But at least I'm working, I'm getting out there and keeping my head busy and that's very important. The people you meet are so lovely. Like you might be bringing the school kids up a mountain that have never been up on a mountain before 
and they're all get to the top of the mountain, they're ringing their mammies, ah, baby, I'm at the top of Mount Mullen or something like that. And they really, you can see their little faces beaming. And that is something you never get when you're in construction industry. You know, it's really a fabulous feeling. And to be able to do that and do it with confidence and make sure everyone comes back safe, super feeling.